Hi there, this is Randy, your sewing machine man. We've got a little uh, Kenmore 385 series. It's a uh, Janome type. You'll see a lot of uh, machines with this size uh, type of platform with the front drop and bobbin and the little black nylon. And I got this in. It's having jamming problems. Everybody's jamming for one reason or the other. You can see it looks fine now. And I'll tell you what we did to make it fine. I let the needle plate screw out here so we can take it apart real quick and see what's going on in here. Take the needle plate off. Measure some done. Take the presser foot off so we can see what's going on. This comes with a plastic bobbin from the factory. The reason it has a plastic bobbin is because it has a magnet underneath the bobbin case that keeps the bobbin case from jumping out this circle around here. This is a magnet. Let me get that out real quick and show you what I'm talking about. That's what keeps your bobbin case from jumping up right there. That magnet helps hold it down into place. Now what happens when you put a metal bobbin in there, and like this one came in with a metal bobbin. See it goes in. It works perfectly except for the bobbin will react to the uh, me uh, metal in the magnet rather and uh, it'll mess up your tension so I get done being fumble fingers here I'll get back on the back on the bar see when this sticks to your magnet that's going to affect your tension it's going to make it off now you can use it just be aware that's going to make the stitch imbalance so these machines when they come with a plastic bobbin you have to use a plastic bobbin that's what this is all about plastic is inert it won't react to the bobbin so you don't get a imbalance. Now the reason this was jamming this machine had been sewing on some heavy stuff getting some needle deflection you see when the needle comes down right where it impacts here the back of the hook there were some little burrs along there you can they are gone now but you could have felt them little impacts where the needle has hit that those have to be filed out ground off uh, either with a file or emery paper you got to get that smooth as it can be. That's why everything's plated. It's got to be smooth. There can't be a snag. When you run your finger across there, you cannot feel a snag. It'll snag the thread. It'll flip this up. The needle will come down. This will flip out. The needle will hit it. And of course, this one had a bunch of impacts along here, which we uh, mitigated off and smoothed them off with a, with a file. And you file them off first. You file them if they're sticking up. You can have an indentation. You can have a depression. That's okay. But if anything's sticking up, the thread will snag on it. It'll flip it out. So anytime it has a depression, it's okay. And you can even make a depression by filing it off. So you keep your uh, crocus cloth handy, your emery paper handy. You emery it smooth. You crocus it, polish it, get it smooth as it can be all the way around this thing. Complete circumference of this has to be smooth. You have to run your finger around the entire circumference. There can't be even the slightest little snag. It'll catch the thread. This will spin out. So once it's been hit, it has to be taken care of, or you can't make another stitch without it being a problem. It's made out of uh, non-metal. Now, you have a thread gap down here. Once you get it nice and smooth, you can get it in there, and you can see that this bumps up against this little cushion here. That's your thread gap spring, and there's a thread gap. So when you turn the hand wheel, the thread actually picks it up, brings it around, slides through right there. That's your thread gap. Every machine has a thread gap. The thread gap is set up for all-purpose dual-duty thread. You know it's all-purpose dual-duty if you can take it, you can spin it, and it stays spun. It'll stay together. That's how you can almost always tell. Sometimes you look on the end of the spool and it's lost its label. Now you can look on here, you can see it says hand quilting. All-purpose dual duty is 5 one hundredths of an inch. This is probably closer to 10 one hundredths of an inch. It's too fat. Won't work. Here we have regular quilting thread. Looks like regular thread, but it's not. It's quilting thread. Here we go. What's another one? What does this say? Buttons, carpets, and crafts. Oh, my word. That is so heavy. That will not work. It won't slide through the thread gap. Flip your bobbin up. Jam it. People ask me, is there a difference in thread? Yeah, this stuff is like rope. It's so big. There's no label on the end. I ask the ladies on the phone, what kind of thread are you using? I don't know. Label's gone. Well, if the label's gone, it's going to be risky business. Here's one that says 
top stitching and buttonhole twist. It says what? Dual duty. Oops. That's our, one of, two of our magic words. But dual duty, all purpose. That's what we're looking for. Dual duty, all purpose. That means it's going to be the correct thread. You can just get all kinds of thread that's just, just wrong. Hand quilting, anything that says the word quilting on it, you got to be real careful if you're using a drop-in bobbin. So you've got your thread gap. You've got your magnet in here. You got it all nice and smooth around here. You got this thing smoothed off here. Put it all back together. Put your needle plate back on. We're going to put the screw in for now. On this one, I had to also do the back of the presser foot along there when the needle hits it. You'll have little dings there where the needle has hit that. That has to be filed off with a diamond metal file. That has to be smooth. There can't be any jags along there. That will also cause a malfunction. A lot of these machines are drop-in, and they're nice little machines. They're as good as anything you're going to get, except they have problems that have to be taken care of. This one with the lay-in threading uh, gets to be a difficult situation when you go to uh, do the lay-in threading. I have lay-in threading on one of my other uh, videos. Always lift the presser foot up, spread the disc apart before you thread the needle. You test it, you pull, you make sure you feel the resistance. Always do that every time. So we got this one, we got the bobbin, we the bobbin in so it's turning counterclockwise. Let's we'll slide it in down here about the six o'clock position. Let it go under the piece of steel. And I always hold my finger there, seat it real good, bring it back across, seat it again. All those little things help you get your tension. Otherwise, it's not in place. And it'll look right, but it won't be right. Put your threads to the rear. I always instruct everybody to be on the safe side. It's what I always do whenever you're putting things back together or check anything out. Always lock. You know, you have your threads held to the back here. Always lock that first stitch by hand. Then when it demands thread, it won't demand from here. It'll demand it from the spool. And then you get it back together and step on the gas. All-purpose, dual-duty, Works like a charm.